everybody, it's Kira with Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to show you a really fun and easy way to make this pretty scarf pin and it's actually two pieces. It's got this the pin here that's actually made of clay and the little dome shaped holder for it so you can decorate a scarf. You could even use this for your hair and it's really simple and easy to make one of these so let's get started round and square border cutter set and I have the two smaller flowers I'm probably only going to use this smallest one from the plum blossom plunger cutters uh, there are four but the larger ones are way too big for this project I have my metal texture tools I always keep those in my little mug here on my table my favorite set of sculpting tools and things so I definitely use that one and <clears throat> this flower one that I always go back to. And then I have an assortment of uh, scrap clay. So this is a bunch of translucent green colors that came from uh, scrap from the class I taught at Polymer Clay Adventure. So adventurers, you know who you are. Um, I told you, keep things around. You'll, you'll use them again, especially when you have... A nice big lump of scrap like like I have here and these are souffle colors and I couldn't tell you what colors they are because these are all mixed I keep all my if I make a project you know I keep my scraps and I will use them again so if you made a color and you didn't use it all up this is an opportunity this is um, these none of these are straight colors they're all things that I have from other projects and then I keep a set of these little um, finger bowls on my table and what I do is I throw scraps that are things I don't want to forget that I have into this bowl so these have a uh, mylar foil on them this has gold leaf and mylar foil these are just things that I was crackling some clay or doing some projects and I had leftovers and I will take these out and use them to accent things so let me show you what I'm working on I have this little dome of metal and I got it in the mail it was some kind of junk mailer thing that I just said oh I have to keep that because look how cool it is it's the perfect size for certain things it's a little bit large for a pendant but it's a really great size for a scarf pin which is what I'm making right now so the first thing I did is I rolled out some of this souffle blue color and I cut a strip of it using the um, circular border cutter here and then I just wrapped it around here and I'll do that again in a minute and show you what how, how to get it round and then I took a piece of that mylar covered blue clay that I had and I rolled a snake and pressed it on here and I used this this is a very detailed little kind of scale uh, metal tool there and I pressed it in to the edges here and along with the flower to make a little pattern and now I'm using this forest leaves mold so I'm gonna add a couple more leaves and um, then I'm going to probably put some flowers all right how to accomplish the curve basically we're going to cut this clay using a regular blade on a straight line Oops. okay just to get rid of the raggedy edge and then we're going to use the border cutter to go ahead and press that in Now my clay is a number three on my pasta machine, which is medium thin, and it's a good thickness for this cutter because otherwise you might get um, 
the cutter actually making an impression on the clay because the clay is too thick. So you want it to be a, about a number three. Okay, so now I've got this shape and I'm going to bevel an edge and then start by just placing it on my shape and now you'll notice as you try to go around curves that it is going to buckle but the clay is really responsive you just let it buckle and then press it down gently until it conforms to the shape it's really not too hard you just have to be gentle with it and go slowly and then you won't get any weird distortion So just take those curves and kind of press your fingers down and together until the clay does what you want it to do. If you go too fast, you'll get like um, ripples or pleating type of a effect, which you may not want. And then when you get to the other end here, I'm going to overlap them and then use my blade to cut and just you have to decide you know if you have a little extra underneath here you could pull that out and then butt them up to each other and close your seam and on my um, pin I chose to put a leaf over where the seam comes together but if the seam was going to be visible then I would spend a lot more time working on that part and then if you want to pattern it just go ahead and use some kind of a stamp or texture tool and go right around the edges I've rolled it out to a number four on my machine, which is fairly thin, still not flimsy, but thin. And you'll notice that I decided three leaves is enough. I didn't really place them perfectly yet, but I will. And as you roll this out, it might have some scraps of gold leaf on it or whatever you've got. You, can, you need to find the spot on there that you want. So I'm going to use a spot that has some gold leaf still on it and just cut that out with my plunger cutter, which is convenient because now I can just pop that shape out of there. And I'm going to need three, so I need to find three good spots on my clay here. Right, I love the plunger cutters. You can clean these in the sink with a nail brush or something if you want to get all the clay off of there. And keep these scraps because once again, you can use them. So I just keep stuff like this that I know has contaminants in it, like the extra gold leaf in that little dish off to the side. Now would be a good time to figure out the exact placement for these forest leaves. And I'm going to make sure they're all pointed in the right direction, which would be the same direction, and just sort of allow them to ruffle. So point to front, point to front, and then over here, the front of that one, and the point of this one. Just sort of gently press them on and allow them to ruffle on the edges. And then we're going to place some flowers. So I was having a thought and my thought worked out. I grabbed some of that darker purpley fuchsia color off the side there. And I'm going to take a little ball about the size of a, a pea, maybe a little bit smaller than a pea. And roll it up and take this in the palm of my hand, which is conveniently cupped. So I'm going to just cup the flower, stick this in here and get my 
flower making tools, which we have a set of them in the shop. And I'm going to press this down into the middle and then cup the flower around it. Still leaving plenty of clay here to fix it onto my shape here, right where the leaves come together. Just going to press it right down in there and then gently wiggle it free. And it leaves this sort of cup shaped flower middle there, like a morning glory. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the last one. To create the pin, which would either be a hair pin or a shawl pin, I'm going to base it on one of these. It's called a Woodsy Craft Pick. And you can get, I got this 750 piece thing for like $3, so very economical. And I'm going to use that same dark blue strip, and what I'm going to do is roll it pretty thin into a snake. Whether I'm using it for my hair or for a shawl, I think doing it this way will be nice because it'll be somewhat ribbed and it won't fall right out. Okay, so now it has the color and and beauty of the polymer clay and the strength of the wooden stick inside and of course it's going to need some little leafy accents at the top it's got to go with the um, with the actual thing that we just made so I'm gonna use this leaf which is a little bit different than the other one It's smaller, so it'll be good for the top of the stick. Here I'm just making sure that the shape is perfect before I put it in the oven because we want it to slide easily through the scarf or your hair and then have this pretty little leafy thing at the top to anchor it. So now it's going to bake for half an hour. Okay, it's all out of the oven now and cool. So you can see how pretty it looks and it's still attached to the metal so we're going to just pop that off. And you see it's got that nice domed shape that it's going to retain now because of the baking right on the domed piece of metal. You could also use something like the, um, I mean, this would work great for something like that, a little finger bowl, or I also have lots of these lying around my studio. This one's a little dirty, but it's also got a nice shape to it for something like this. It's just um, like one of those dash of spices kind of bowl that you can get for the kitchen. And my little stick thing is also cooled off and ready to use. So now, you know, you can use it as a scarf pin. You could use this for your hair if you were so inclined and had long hair. But you can definitely decorate a scarf with it. Instead of just putting that scarf around your neck, now you've got a way to loop it and hold it in place with this pretty little pin. So I hope that you enjoyed that idea. There are so many ways to make something. Really, you just need a shape that's slightly domed with a hole in it and a stick. So, so many different ways you could interpret this technique. So have lots of fun. Make sure that you um, subscribe to our channel and of course, post pictures and tag Polymer Clay TV. We'd love to see what you make. So we'll see you next time.